Yeah, hello and welcome to the third and last part of this tutorial series where we are going to look again at this project here. And while in the first two parts we already created these moving sliders here and also this volume meter, in this last part we are going to finish the project by adding here these animating circles and this animating text. And in particular these circles here are interesting because they are made with the help of time remapping eye expressions, uh, which is quite nice because then you can not only move things in a straight line as we have it with these sliders here, but also more complex movements like for example these rotations here. Okay, anyway, so let's start. Here I've got the project open from the second part and we are going to continue on this. And I think the first thing we are going to add is this text here, yeah, this uh, sliding text. And to clean everything a bit up, I first select here these elements of the volume meter because we don't need them anymore currently, so I make them shy and enable here shyness such that everything looks just a little bit more compact. Now I use here this text tool and create a text that I just called beat. Yeah. And then we're going to place it where we want to have it, like here, turn it into a 3D layer and use this rotation tool here to rotate it in a way that it looks... Oops, I selected the wrong layer. Undo, control Z. Uh, maybe I lock this layer so that it doesn't happen accidentally. Uh, so we want to rotate it along the z-axis, like this, and maybe a bit here on the x-axis, yeah, such that it looks as if it would be located here in the scene, like this. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to move this element here in this direction according to uh, the beat. And this is basically the same as moving these sliders here, except that it is a 3D layer. Yeah? So we have here still from the second part our uh, audio amplitude, I move it on top, and we have here this both channels volume slider that contains information of the volume, you know this from the previous parts, so I'm not going to explain it in detail. We go to the eye expressions library, and the expression we this time use is from the linking category, the linear link 3D, because this is a 3D property now, yeah, we have a 3D layer, and I select OK. And of course we need to link to the slider again, so this is the slider that we have. And we also discussed in the first two parts already that um, the volume we have here, yeah, so these keyframes are between 0 and 60. So this is the range of elements we have here, the range of uh, um, values we have on this uh, slider. And now we need to specify, okay, when the volume is at level 0, where should the text be? Well, it should be located exactly here. So we can look up the position from the position of this text layer. I click on P. So here's the position. This is, let me just copy this quickly, 293.1. Next one is 170.1. And third component, minus 0.1. Okay, and then when the music becomes louder, it should move, namely in this direction. So I just take this arrow and drag here a bit, maybe like this. This is the position 318, 318.2, 193.2, and minus 31.2. Yeah? And we just apply this to this position here. And what now happens, if we look at the preview, is that this beat is moving yeah, whenever, so to speak, here this loudness uh, or this volume indicator goes up, the beat moves here to the right. So nothing special. Maybe we can make this beat look a bit more interesting by adding some layer styles. So we go to Layer Styles and then uh, Bevel and Emboss looks quite nice. And then the next thing we want to do is we do not just want this text to move, but we also want to actually change it yeah, over time according to the music, because sometimes this text beat should be replaced by the text uh, detection, yeah, beat detection. 
This can be done with an other I expression from the library. We go here to the audio category and use the change on beat text. And this is actually again very easy to use. It just says give me here some text that should that the original text should be replaced with. Yeah. So I say here detection. And now we need to link this to some beat. So and whenever this beat is detected, the original text is replaced by this one. Now in this composition we just have this audio amplitude currently and no beat detector I expressions as we used it in the first part. Yeah? We could of course duplicate here our audio amplitude and apply some beat detectors, whatever beat detector we want to have. We can also reuse the stuff we have here in our main composition. Yeah? We have here already three beat detectors. The third one was for example the beat detector from marker here which had always a beat when these uh, markers here are set. And you can see that these markers actually control the movement of uh, of this last slider here. Yeah, whenever you have here such a beat, this 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 slider here starts moving. Uh, here there's no movement and then here again this slider on, on these here the slider is moving again and now we want basically whenever this slider here is moving up so whenever the speed detector 3 is active we want the text to be replaced by detection so therefore we take this uh, both channels slider yeah this beat signal here and link the i expression to it and now we can go back to this composition yeah so for i expressions it's really no problem to link stuff with uh, elements from other compositions um, so you can link to stuff in the main composition if you have here precomps like this one or vice versa. Uh, here it's actually vice versa that this is a precomp, right, which is located here. No problem at all. And okay, we need to apply it to the source text of this text layer. Yeah? We apply this. Now you can see here the text is directly replaced by detection because we are currently here at such a beat signal. And if we go to another position between these beats. Yeah, it's again named beat. Yeah, so very nice. Now the text changes according to our beats. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do to make this text a little bit nicer is uh, to add a shadow. For this I duplicate the text layer. So I go to edit duplicate or control D move the second copy here below and rename it to beat shadow. For the shadow I add some fill. So uh, I go to effects and presets. Let me move those here. Fill. And we fill it with black and also add some fast blur uh, fast blur and set this blurriness to something like 2 or so and rotate the shadow now such that it's lying on the ground so we take here again the rotation tool we want to rotate around this x axis here so we select it and now we move it until the green arrow looks as if it would lie in the plane. Yeah. So we basically rotate it 90 degrees here. And now you have a nice shadow. Okay, maybe we can make it a little bit more blurry, maybe three. Uh, matter of taste. Anyway, so now the text is finished. And the last thing we're going to look at is um, this uh, element with these circles here. So for this we first are going to create uh, some uh, new composition. So I go to the project and right click and say new composition. And in this case we want this composition to have a height of 120 pixels and also a wide of 120 pixels and we call it uh, sorry circle like this. Yeah. And everything else should be okay. And here in we just want to create our this this circle on which these elements these dots are then later moving. So we create a new solid and call it 
background and make it white. And we duplicate this background twice by going to Edit, Duplicate it. Uh, and the idea is, you will see this now, one is a background, the next one will be the grid on top of the background, and the third one is our mat. And on the mat layer, <coughs> on the mat layer we choose the ellipse tool and double click on it. Now we have here an elliptic mask. If I enable the masking you can see it here. And then I set the transfer mode, uh, not of the mask but of the layer. So I click here and set the mode to um, stencil alpha. Yeah, you cannot see it but among these options here further below you have stencil alpha. And when you do a stencil alpha then basically the alpha channel of this is also used for all the layers below. Yeah, In other words now we have here this circular mask and everything except for this circle is also cut out from these elements. Yeah, So if I enable transparency here you can see everything except the circle is now nicely transparent. Okay then we set the transparency of the background to something like 10% and for this grid layer here I'm actually going to add a grid. So where do we have it? Generate grid, drop it on top of here and now you can see we have here a nice grid Yeah, and here we have below the grid this background showing th through with its just 10% transparency. Also the grid itself should be quite transparent so I click here on T to reveal the opacity and set it to something like 20% and also the lines should be there should be a bit smaller like 1.5 border and a bit more distant so I set this here to 80 and 80 to have now such a such a grid. Okay so now we have our basic circle here and I go back to our main composition here yeah, where we in inserted the text and have our mixer and so on and in this I drag our circle composition. I drag it roughly here where it uh, should be placed, maybe a little bit lower and then I again make it 3D as we did it with the text, yeah, like this here and then we rotate it around this axis here like this, maybe also a bit around the z-axis such that it looks as if it would be oriented here correctly in space. Okay, we can adjust this later but the next thing of course what makes this not looking right is that uh, some part of this knob here should be show through this, Yeah, so we need to cut something out of this layer basically. For this we could add a mask on this layer but the problem is when we move or rotate it then the mask should not, would not stay where it is and we want it to stay there, therefore we create a new layer, new solid, make it comp size and call it circle, oh, I'm not so good in typing circle today, Circle mat, yeah. circle mat. Okay, we make this circle mat invisible, and now we zoom in here. If I click the space bar, I can move my composition, and then with the mouse wheel, I zoom in. Again, space bar, and now zooming in. And now with this circle mat selected, I take here this pen tool to create a. Um, to create a mask, so I click here and draw a mask around this knob. By the way, when I pit pr press now the spacebar, I can move those points in case I've placed them wrongly. And like this, yeah, I think this is looking quite nice. And now we have here this uh, white solid created like this, yeah. And I make it invisible. And for the layer below, I click here and set now the track mat to uh, alpha inverted mat, which means where the original thing was uh, not transparent, this one will become transparent. Yeah. So exactly here, this 
wide area. And now we have the impression, I zoom out again a bit, that this, uh, this circle here is uh, integrated here in the scene and is placed around uh, this knob here. Yeah? And we can fine-tune this here now, move this around. But I think like this, it's already looking quite nice. Okay, so the next thing is then to place these orange dots here uh, on this uh, on this circle. So we go here in the composition, add a new uh, solid, and this time it should just be 20 times 20 pixel and have this orange color. Call it maybe just dot. And so this orange color I use for Mamo World is always F three nine seven one B like this. And I double click here on the circle to create a circular mask around the dot. And then, oops, I didn't want to move the mask actually, so let's hide this, but I wanted to move the, the layer itself. Just move it here on top. And again with the scroll wheel, I move in a bit. And now what we want to do is we want to make this circle move here along this line. Yeah, And one thing that we usually uh, I would do for this is probably to take a null object, place it here in the middle, and parent it to the null object and rotate it. And then you could even use the um, I expression linear link 1D or some beat detector to control this rotation and to make this element uh, rotate here. But in this case, I want to show you the time remapping idea, and this works not only uh, with 1D properties like rotation, but uh, so. Imagine that this cr uh, this path on which it travels would not be circular, but a more complex movement path. And you want to move it on this path according to the music. Yeah, then this would this technique with the rotation would not work. Um, and so, therefore, I'm going to show you now this technique that works with arbitrary motion passes. So let's create a motion path for this circle here. Um, so for this, I'm going to create again another mask. Yeah, with this dot layer selected. I click here in the middle, and now I keep the control key selected and the shift key selected. By this, I make a perfect uh, cir circle, yeah, and I make it such that it exactly visits here these two two points of the circle, like this. And now I go to this mask and go to the mask pass, and do edit copy. And now I open the position of this layer by clicking P go to the position and say edit paste. Yeah, now the layer jumps here down and we can move it up again. Oops, I again selected the mask. Edit undo, so I just want to move the... Uh, actually, I can delete this second mask here now. So I can select the mask and go to edit uh, clear. Mm. Uh, we want to clear the entire mask. So let's just reveal it here. So this second mask is no more needed because we've copied it now to the position. P, so here's the position. Now I hide the mask and now I can nicely move this position here. Yeah? What we now have are here a few keyframes that make this circle travel along exactly this path. And again, all this, what we are going to do now, would also work with arbitrary other passes. Okay, let's move these um, keyframes here to the beginning of the composition, like this. And now we do not just want to have one circle, but we would have w what we want to have four circles. Yeah? For this, I'm going to duplicate this here four times. Edit duplicate or clicking Control D. So Control D, Control D. Now I have here four such dots, and all of them have their own um, motion paths with these keyframes. So if we now go to our main composition, what we have is a bit boring. Namely, we have here these four dots that just travel here once around this. Yeah? We want it to travel a little bit more interesting according to the audio amplitude. Therefore, we go here to our audio amplitude layer and choose again an eye expression from the library, namely the in the linking category, this linear link time remap. So, so far I always use this linear link 1D, 2D and 3D for 1D, 2D or 3D properties. 
and now we use this time remapping which basically works with all these properties and also others basically with everything you can keyframe and uh, okay how is this working the first is again exactly the same as with the other linear links namely we need to link to our audio amplitude yeah, to this slider here and then we need to tell what is the minimum and maximum value 0 and 60 and now I do not give a value for the result but I give a frame yeah and the idea is the following we go here now to our circle so for example to this dot here and now it says okay yeah I have here many keyframes yeah or I have here a lot of different frames and at each frame this position has another value and what this here currently says is that when the volume so when my uh, volume or audio amplitude slider has a volume of zero takes a value from frame one if it is very loud takes a value from frame 10 yeah which would be mean that it would travel between uh, this position here yeah frame one and this position here frame 10 so it will always travel this little piece and jump here back and forth so to speak whenever the music changes between 0 and 60. Now of course we want to have something different then we want it to travel until 50 yeah so we go here to 50 and it should start at frame 0. Okay we apply this to this one you can see immediately it jumps here yeah while all the three others still do their normal traveling this one uh, now jumps around here according to the music maybe let's do the lower to uh, invisible to do not I irritate you and here to the second one which is still visible uh, I apply the same thing but let's say with the slider maximum of 120 yeah, this would mean this means if it has a slider maximum of 120 it means when the volume has a level of uh, 60 uh, it has just gone half the way so in other words this one is going to move half as fast as this one by the way maybe it's irri irritating you but an al alternative to do exactly the same would be to go here into the linking options and select the scale of 50 percent for this uh, uh, slider yeah it's the same just another option to do the same anyway i'm going to apply this here and now we can see already what is happening yeah? so we have now two dots they are both moving according to the volume so whenever the volume here is going up these dots are moving and one of the two is moving uh, twice as fast as the other one because for one of them we change the input range compared to the other one yeah and now we add also these other two elements and make them also a little bit different so let's say for this one again we wanted to move um, a little bit uh, let's say here I show you the other alternative say okay the input uh, signal goes from 0 to 60 yeah this means for 60 it does a full round but um, we change here these linking options to say first well I scale this to uh, let's say 60 percent yeah, meaning it just means moves 60 percent as much as it should normally do and also let's say we add here um, an offset yeah, an offset means that the signal is always that much higher let's say we set this here to 30 this means the point does not start here but it st starts as if the volume so when the volume has a level of zero it thinks the volume has actual level of 30 yeah, meaning it is always uh, a bit more uh, to this side here I apply this here and then let's say for the fourth one we do exactly the same but we also want to have some time offset in other words it follows this dot but always a little bit delayed yeah let's say two frames later apply okay now we have four dots here that are moving and note that all of them move within exactly the same composition yeah so it's not w w if you would do a normal time remapping you would need four compositions and time remap each of them separately for moving to four dots but here you do not time remap the entire composition but you actually just a uh, time remap each of these layers properties separately yeah with this i expression which makes it much more compact and much more convenient to use I think I've forgotten to make the last one visible. Uh, let's re-enable this. Uh, 
And now you can see we have here these nice four dots moving and one of them is basically always chasing the other one. So it's always a little bit time delayed be below the up here. Uh, after the other one and then we have these different scales that make some of them move faster and some of them move slower. So of course all of this is a bit matter of taste and you can uh, change it however you like. Yeah, it's a bit uh, playing. <laughs> but in total I think this already looks quite nice. So one thing I would definitely do here also is to enable here some motion blur. So motion blur for these layers and motion more blur for this composition so that you feel more the speed when these elements are moving. Okay, so finally I would also add some motion blur to this uh, text here and also to these sliders, but I think you can do this on your own. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I con could convince you that eye expressions is really a handy tool to animate stuff according to music among many other tasks and that it's really convenient and very easy to make all this happen with the help of these nice interfaces. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you also join in again for the next tutorial. My name is Matthias and yeah, see you next time.